We are here with Martin, aka the Martinator, on <laughs> Wild One. And we met Martin in Coco's Keeling, and we thought he was awesome. And he's so active, we started calling him Martin the Wild One. I'm trying to get the Delos crew out of the boat <laughs> into the wild. Into the wild. <laughs> and his catamaran is really awesome. So we've decided to go over and talk to Martin about like the good things about cats, some of the pros and also some of the cons because we, we really don't know that much about cats and a lot of people ask questions about catamaran versus monohull. So we're here to gain your expertise, Martin. Okay. So tell us how long, so tell us about this boat, tell us about the wild one. What? Yeah, the, the basic story was that I fell in love with this kind of boat when I did my first trip on a monohull over the Atlantic and a good friend of mine had a similar boat and I I was so amazed that it does, nothing does fall around anymore and uh, there's so much space and you come you come on the boat and you actually feel like you are in a house and since you are more living on a boat and not sailing most of the time right yeah it's an important thing and I fell in love with the boat but it was far over my budget so I had to work a long long time and then we started to build these boats with that friend in Sri Lanka. So we built four, four boats of this. Have been built Where was she designed? In she's a French design, Eric Le Rouge. Oh, okay. It's a very famous catamaran designer. A long time. So how many miles have you sailed there? Um, oh, that's a good question. A lot. You've already done what, at least one circumnavigation. Yes. So you've gone all the way around. Yeah. You go back to where you started, and then it must have you like pulled a Bernard Motosia, you just kept on going. Yeah. <laughs> must, must be 40,000 miles, maybe. That's a lot, of, so you, you, yeah. know, you know sailing catamaran is pretty good then. Yeah, by now we have we've had a lot of adventures, yeah. mostly good ones. So what are some of the specifics? How big of a catamaran is this? How long is she? It is 49 feet. 49, and quite long. 8 meters wide. And it's only six and a half tons if you compare it with a lagoon. Lagoon is twice or three times the same. So 49 feet long, you said eight meters beam, which is uh, 24, almost 25 feet, something like yes. that, right? Um, six and a half tons. So one of the biggest questions we have is about safety. Like everybody says, is a catamaran safe to sail in, <coughs> on an ocean? And can you flip it? And what is, do you worry about that at all? Maybe it's possible somewhere in the 50s or whatever, the roaring 50s. But I've never been there, so I cannot say. But in the conditions I were in, I never actually even were close to lifting a hole. Even in 50 knots of wind. Yeah. And even with too much sails, one time we, we didn't reef in time on a run. We had full mainsail on. And then it got 40 in a squall, 40 knots, and then even more, 50. So at one point we said, no, we must stop now, which was the wrong decision. We should have kept going. But we still went into the wind with the full sail. In the moment you, you make the turn, you, you get the full increase of the wind. Yeah. Right? And then uh, even there, the, the hole didn't lift. Cool. So in big winds like that, if you did hit really bad weather and it's going to be along for a while, if we felt things were getting crazy, we would just heave too, because yeah. it's very comfortable for us and the boat just settles down. Would you heave too in this boat or would you run with it or what I would you do? I would just put the sails down and run with it. Yeah, just run on poles mm -hmm. with everything behind you. All right, I think it would still be 10 knots. And the good thing is the boat is so long that it doesn't really run the danger to uh, capsize, you know, to pitch, pitch pole, pitch pole, right, to make a over forward. Yeah. But smaller cuts, I've been told, are pretty dangerous in that respect. Yeah. Like the designer says, 40 feet is the good size for a cruising catamaran. For an ocean crossing yeah. catamaran. Yeah. yeah. And with 49, I'm pretty much on the same safe side, I think. Yeah. Cool. All the other safety things you have, these escape hatches, etc. The catamaran is unsinkable. If it really would flip over, you could. Ha you have a big uh, life raft here, actually, with all the provisions. So it's on board. kind of positively, positively buoyant, mm -hmm. even full of water. Even if it run aground, it wouldn't sink. Actually. If the poles are still connected. 
Yeah. What do you like about how the catamaran sails versus I love that you have this uh, big space you can live and when I say with crew I always have my own hole that's also very important for me so and for my girlfriend privacy and, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. and I love that you can actually leave everything like it is you don't have to you know store away everything on my mono hole I had to pack away everything properly in all the little boxes etc and here I just leave everything like it is. You can even leave a bottle of wine there normally. And you see the, the stove doesn't have any, it's not cardamic, etc. Yeah, it's no it's on it, because you don't need it. Speed, when, when you run with the boat or you, you're on a, on a ridge, it, it's flying. For example, around the Cape in, uh, in the north of Madagascar, mm -hmm. this is my... Uh, Cape de Ambre? Cape de Ambre. And there's, there was 30 knots of wind and we went 20 knots, 20.2 knots constant. That's good. Yeah. It was yeah, and incredible. Just to compare in similar conditions, we were doing like a constant 9 or 10 and then we'd get up to like 12 every yeah. once in a while. So you were at least 8 knots faster than us in the same conditions, which is quite a bit. 20 knots is really fast. It was really <laughs> fast. flying. But it, it was exceptional conditions too. <coughs> For me, a, a possible average cruising speed could be 50 knots with, with good conditions. Yeah. So when you do your route planning, how many miles per day, like for yeah. 24 hours, do you Yeah, say? Maybe, maybe same like you. It's like you don't have this this really good wind normally. And you always reef when you cruise, so you would never push it. Yeah. And then I'm maybe not really faster than you. So speed is not really an argument. So you don't care about speed for long crossings, you just comfort and safety. On the other hand, for example, when I sailed to Rodriguez from Cocos to Rodriguez, I was alone. And I did this 2,000 miles in 10 days, so I had so average one. It's like 8.5 knots or 8.4 yeah. knots average and all the time. And that was, I, <coughs> sails reef down totally, me sleeping, watching your movies. The Martin makes probably the best cappuccino in the cruising community. He does it right. He heats up the I milk. Try, try He's best. got real coffee. It's nothing instant about it. It's the real. We cannot have instant coffee. The real deal. That yeah, is it is pretty legit, legit, isn't it? It is totally legit. I mean, you guys want some milk? I'm just gonna have. Today's my non-drinking day. But Brady said he wants some milk. Brady doesn't have any non-drinking days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so do you have dagger boards or no, mini kills? No dagger boards, but mini kills. So it's it's all a trade-off in in cruising. You kind of have to trade away things. Like for safety and comfort, I decided we decided for mini kills. Yeah. And that's actually what Eric Lurch basically does. He most of his boats are mini kill. It's, so what's your draft then with the? It's 1.1 meters. 1.1 meters. So it's not, it's not, not very not much, much at all. But you can, you know, you can take her and run her on the beach and let her try fall and do the anti falling. Or, you know, you can, you can when you run on a on a log, you would not lose your rudders or your your engines are your sail drives are protected by the kills. And we had that once. We we ran into a big log, made a bank, but no damage. Other boats would have lost their rudder possibly. And I know or several. Broken the dagger board yeah. or something. And the dagger board, it, when it breaks, it's a pity. It costs a lot, etc. But it can also crash the hull, you know. If the dagger board, the case actually gets cracked open, the boat can sink. Mm. And that happened, I think, in Panama. I have heard of a case like this. How do you think the performance is? Are there any performance trade offs for like yeah. the mini keel versus the dagger board? I think there is a little. But we're like heading upwind or yeah. different angles? I think you, you would lose um, speed by uh, because you have more resistance, right? Yeah, yeah. of, yeah. of course, down, downwind and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then upwind, of course, you would lose maybe 10, 10 degrees. So you don't point five quite, degrees, quite yeah. as high as. Yeah. You, dagger you might you might lose five degrees to the wind. Yeah. But since I don't wanna beat up anyway as a cruiser, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. As I choose my routes. 
We still win. I, I tried to. So what is the plan today, Martin? Today we have an incredible cruise to Ambadaluk. We have the best steak in Nosy Bay. So my first question for you is, where the hell is your wheel? I have no wheel. I have uh, actually economized the wheel. <laughs> Economy it right out of the equation. There is a dealer. You can deal us here if you want. So yeah, what I was kind of saying when we when we first were, were sailing in here, and like I was up at the bow, and it looked like the one of the holes was cut, like kind of coming out, and then it would slam. And do you ever get really bad slams? Because a lot of people we talk to are like, you know, sometimes we can launch off a wave and we'll skip the bottom and land on top of the other one. Wow. Whereas you guys might not do that, but do you ever get waves that slam up between the holes? Yeah, you you would actually, but. That catamaran specifically has a very high bridge to clearance. This one, one specifically. 1.2 yeah. meters. So it happens, but it doesn't happen so bad on yeah. these other catamarans. Yeah. And the only thing is it's noisy. It would never destroy the boat. Right. It's very solid, solid. Yeah. And there's a lot of going through bulkheads. Five or six actually. And they are all solidly laminated to the to the hose and laminated. And they are all from the same material, like other boats they have wooden bulkheads combined yeah, to a sandwich hole. Yeah. And that of course is always cracking or expanding differently. Yeah, because then you kind of have movements between the holes, right? And yeah, that's the, the critical <laughs> connection on a catamaran. There's yeah. a lot of force on it. Yeah. yeah and lot, and this one is actually one piece, so it's. I think it's almost indestructible, but yeah. nothing is indestructible. Nothing. <laughs> is that like the Titanic? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so like the motion, like you've had it, you've had experience sailing on monoholes mm. before, before you got this. And how do you compare the the motion? I mean, you said, of course, you leave you leave everything yeah. out and stuff. But I think this, the thing is, my monohull was a, a racing monohull too. It was a yeah. Shano one design, and that was pretty uncomfortable. But that one is more comfortable. It doesn't heel over, but it's still uh, what you say, slamming, not pitching. It's like. Yeah, I think, well, the motion to me it's feels harder. a little bit yeah. quicker yeah. and more sudden, whereas Delos tends to like take a big puff of breeze or hit a wave mm -hmm. and move a little bit with it. This one, you know, you don't heal, of course, but it just feels like, okay, the wave moves that way, and now you go that way, and then you move a little bit. So that takes a little bit. That's to because it's, it's very light, the boat is super light, so it actually accelerates fast and. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true, where it would take us a lot to get going and then we just plow through. Yeah. It's almost like you would bounce all around on the waves. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a problem. Not a problem, it's different. Oh, it's a, huh? Yeah, you it's, yeah it's just different. It's just different. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's really getting bad. I mean, if you have bad waves, you really have to reef fast so not uh, yeah. too much uh, damage. Like we were talking about before, I guess you have to be quite more conservative than we would be where Absolutely. wind came on with us. It like when we sailed to Nozihara, I, I would have, I, I have reefed all the time, I had the third reef yeah. on and you had reefed out totally, right? Mm, no, we, mm. we took in a reef oh. and then later in the day we went to a second reef. Oh, you did? Okay. But because but we, we, you know, we, we're healing over so much, it's just we're losing waterline and speed and it just doesn't make sense anymore to have and, it and that's up. the next thing on, on that boat you don't have any healing over you just go flat you have the full power in the sails and, and that makes a bad movement There's yeah no, no damping yeah exactly uh so you can go upwind and we'll just talk like apparent numbers 
like a lot of people wonder if a catamaran can work upwind mm -hmm. and you can actually quite well i think you were matching our angle or pretty close to our angle yep. when we were sailing in Ozihara and out here as well when we left the nature pretty, reserve. Pretty much the same performance. So you were like, because we were sailing at like 40 apparent or maybe a little bit less? I think and between 30 and 40, yeah. Yeah. something like this. Yeah. Apparent. And you're and still making swell, you're still making good speed. This isn't flat water of course and you're still making okay good speed and not slipping, yeah. not slipping so much. Could be better with stagger boards but uh, Oh, I'm happy, really. I don't need more. Yeah, and I haven't planned to really go long distance again to against the wind anyway. I mean, downwind, it's probably pretty comfortable, and yeah. it's like anything. Sometimes, I guess the the benefit would be when we go downwind and the wind sort of dies, we get like the death rolls, you know, where the boat will just if if the swell is still high from the wind, yes. but the wind drops, the boat will just really roll back and forth. Yeah, you don't have to. Where you guys much. might not have. Yeah. On, a, of a roll. on an anchorage, it's also very comfortable. If you have a rolling anchorage, you you it get really noises, etc. But yeah. there is no rolling action. Yeah. Sometimes I meet uh, guys on a monohull, and I'm <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> really, how the boat moves on the anchorage. Oh man! But you, yours doesn't actually. Yours no, really. No, it does. If, if, if you get us in a in the right period period of swell, uh -huh. it's got to be yeah. a, a wider period. Yeah. Then, if it catches up with us, then we start. And it gets real yeah, bad, and then we just leave. Like it's really just, bad, where you, it's like you're sailing, like you're <laughs> rashing from side to side. It's terrible. Which would never, never happen for you. I but guess. I mean, that's pretty. Doesn't happen yeah. very often. Because stuff like this, we just kind of sit. Because we're heavy, we just. Yeah. You're very much more weight sensitive than us, mm -hmm. right? Because you're a light boat. Mm -hmm. You're a performance kind of cat, and we can just like pile or sorts of shit on Delos and not really care too much about the weight. Whereas, how weight critical are you? Do you not carry a lot of stuff? Do you it's think a, a lot about question. it? I, I don't really know, but I, I think I'm pretty weight sensitive. And I tried to, because I've heard about it, but I have no, no real experience. I had lots of stuff at the second thingy and uh, lots of spare parts and old, old rigging parts, etc. And I, I disposed of them. At one yeah. point, but I cannot say am I faster now or not. It's it's really hard. What about as far as say. balancing each hole? It doesn't matter at all. That doesn't matter at all. No, really. So if you have one hole heavier than another, your performance doesn't really change. You you rather try to avoid uh, weight in the front, yeah, the, on the back, and uh, generally the boat has all its weight in the center, like the fuel tank and the water tank. They are right beside the mast. Oh, they are, and okay. The anchor chain and the anchor as well, right? Yeah, that's so cool. All the Is that specific to yeah, the wild one? That's I mean, it's it's well, it's Paramundi. Okay, same. yeah. So I, was, I think if other cats had a stronger, a bigger water storage or bigger fuel, it would be in the bilges of the holes or something no, like that. I don't that, know where they have it. It's different. But yeah. But yours is in the center by the mast. Yeah. And that's, that's because it's a sportive yeah. catamaran. So how much water do you carry then? It's only 300 liters. 300 liters. 350. But you have a water maker. I have a water maker. But no generator. No generator. Because you don't need one really. No, not so far. I so have five solar panels, 500 watts. Yeah, you have good solar. Yes, There's a lot of room for solar. You can run the water maker without a problem. And, it's, and it doesn't power. matter if it's small, if you can just run out of solar. Cause you yeah, just you run can it run it the whole day. Yeah. It's noisy. But and how much fuel do you carry? Uh, that's uh, 700 liters. Okay, so that's quite a good yeah. amount. That's actually more fuel than we carry. We yeah. only carry 600. We only have 600. Fuel. Yeah, that's actually quite a lot. I was expecting yeah. less. I have two engines. Yeah. Yeah. So how big are your <laughs> engines then? You have two, yeah, but only 30, 30 horsepower. 30 each. horsepower. Yanma, Yeah. And uh, they don't use a lot of fuel actually. They, they are very. Yeah. Very. What do you say? Efficient. 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 Yes. So some of the benefits, I think, two engines, you've got like built-in redundancy, yeah. like if a belt breaks or a hose breaks, you still have one engine. So that's super cool. And Alternators. You have two rudders. Two rudders. It's a you have two rudders. Thing. So that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, but then, do you think the maintenance? What are the like? What are some of the downfalls of the cost of the catamaran? I mean, I think they're quite. They're more, generally more expensive, right? To yeah. to buy and maintain. 
I think they might they might be almost uh, twi twice as expensive in a piece of mono. Well, it's hard to say. Yeah, it's hard to say. It depends. Depends right? on depends on the boat. And uh, they cost much more in the marinas, like almost yeah. double sometimes. It's so yeah. wide, you have to take out two berths. Yeah, that's what they say at least. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, uh, then sure you have uh, scraping scraping the hole from barnacles and antifouling. That's much more work. You have twice as much water light yeah. as us if you go, you know. Yeah, if you go around. around. And then right. polishing the hole, you know, yeah. twice as much work. Lots of fiberglass. Yeah. Uh, two. Two oil changes, but two oil changes, everything too. But that's but okay. You got built-in. But then, then you can always alternate the engines. You would, yeah, I was if there's say, no yeah. wind, I use only one engine. It's very rarely you'd run both yeah. unless you're maneuvering. Exactly. Just I guess that's another thing that's that's quite different with cats compared to monoholes is the maneuverability. Unless you have a bow thruster, but mm, yeah. being able to maneuver these is like just turn on a dime with both <coughs> engines, that's, that's a pretty a good plus, especially in wind trying to dock or something. Do you have a bow thruster? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you might need it in South Africa. <laughs> we <laughs> love our bow thrusters. You go in, you go in a very narrow channel, Yeah. the marina, yeah. 40 knots of wind from this side. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. horrible. <laughs> so let's see, other cool things that we like about cats looking at it from some of the things that suck on Delos is we don't really have a good place to store the dinghy. So we end up lifting it up on the foredeck, whereas you have this really sweet spot on the stern for davits yeah. for a, a pretty big dinghy. Yeah, they are fiber, uh, carbon fiber davits actually. They should take a lot of load. Yeah. They laminate it through the aft pin, which is a very structural part of the boat. So it should be, should be fine. And it gives you lots of area to mount solar panels. Mm. Like you said, you have five, 500 watts. Yeah. Like you said. It was so impressive because before actually I thought there are no fast catamarans, they are just swimming uh, caravans. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I. Condos on the water. Then I, I got to know this boat and I was really impressed. Yeah. And I'm very, very happy with this boat. Still, still just as impressed? Yeah. Yeah, cool. It always impresses me more. <laughs> Which is a good boat. So if you were to get another boat. Do you have any idea of I see any that other boat? I will never get a good boat like this again. But it's it's always a question of money. Like this boat is five hundred thousand euros new, and uh, you put all I, I did put all my money in it, and I cannot I can still cannot afford it to really keep it. So I have to sell it, and um, I would buy a cheaper one. But it will not be as good as this, and I might be very disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you stick with the catamaran, you think, for your next boat? No, not necessarily. If I sell in the mid, yeah, I, I might have uh, better model. Ben, everything. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for taking us sailing on Wild One. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Well, thanks for coming. Well, let's have some zebo steak. Zebo steaks. Sweet. All right. Let's see what my crew is doing. Is my crew still alive? Snap stop. <laughs> if you want to do some hardcore cruising, diving, and rock climbing, maybe check out Martin's website and see if there's a crew opening. Martin the Wild One is always looking for a crew, and he's a pretty awesome dude to sail with. Oh yeah, and he makes a wicked cappuccino. Do it again, Martin.
Now, now do the Arnold one. <laughs> you know? You, maybe you should do 20 push-ups first. <laughs> yeah, so you uh, can pump. Yeah, get ripped. <laughs> and put a, a, a sock in your uh, so we, This is Martin and he is here to pump. Awesome. <laughs> Good that I don't speak English. I understand only half these guys are saying. He's so active we started calling him Martin the Wild One. I'm trying to get the Delos crew out of the boat. <laughs> into the wild. Into the wild. <laughs> And his catamaran is really awesome, so we've decided to go over and talk to Martin about like the good things about cats, some of the pros and also some of the cons, because we, we really don't know that much about cats and a lot of people ask questions about catamaran versus monohull. So we're here to gain your expertise, Martin. Okay. So tell us how long, so tell us about this boat, tell us. So I had to work a long, long time and then we started to build these boats with that friend in Sri Lanka. So we built four four boats of this have been built. Where was she designed? In she's a French design, Eric Le Rouge. Oh, okay. It's a very famous catamaran designer. A long time. So how many miles have you sailed in? Um oh, that's a good question. A lot. You've yeah. already done what, at least one circumnavigation. Yes. So you've gone all the way around. Yeah. You go back to where you started and then it must have you like pulled a Bernard Motosia, you just kept on going. Yeah. <laughs> We are here with Martin, aka the Martinator, on Wild One, and we met Martin in Coco's Keeling, and we thought it was awesome. And it's about the Wild One. What? Yeah, the, the basic story was that I fell in love with this kind of boat when I did my first trip on a monoboat over the Atlantic, and a good friend of mine had a similar boat, and I, I was so amazed that it does, nothing does fall around anymore, and. Uh, there's so much space and you come you come on the boat and you actually feel like you are in a house. And since you are more living on a boat and not sailing, most of the time, right? Yeah. It's an important thing. And I fell in love with that boat, but it was far over my budget. <laughs> must be 40,000 miles, maybe. That's a lot. So you, you, yeah. know, you know sailing Canterbury is pretty good there. Yeah. By now we have we've had a lot of adventures, yeah. mostly good ones. So what are some of the specifics? How big of a catamaran is this? How long is she? It is 49 feet. 49 is and quite long. 8 meters wide. And it's only 6.5 tons if you compare it with a lagoon. Lagoon is twice or three times. So 49 feet long, you said 8 meters beam, which is uh, 20. 